Nando, how are you? Gary, very well. Very, very well. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, mate. I'm glad you're here. Um, do you know, and this will sound really creepy, so forgive me, but I've kind of watched your story with interest the last few months and I thought, we'll obviously get into the, the crux of everything, but at the start and you were on everything and everybody was all early and I'm like, this guy probably just wants a break for people messing him going, what about this or what about this? And then... I seen that you'd followed the podcast page and I was like, ah, this is a sign. This is a sign that something's got to happen here. And I thought I'd drop my wee message and you were kind enough to reply and say, aye, let's do it. Oh, similar to yourself, just been watching from afar and really, really enjoying your content. And But aye, I'm glad you never reached out at the beginning because <laughs> my head was absolutely melted with <laughs> just a minute of quest, you know. Nobody can prepare you for that. No, madness, I was going to say, so you're obviously, for, for anybody who, who doesn't know, September last year, am I right in saying, you became the, the only, still as far as I know, openly gay footballer in Scotland. Aye. How has the last six months been since then? Because I, I can only imagine what it's been like, but for you, how has that whole period been? Aye, it's been uh, a whirlwind. It's exceeded my expectations tenfold, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Um, I just can't believe this is my life and yeah. Stephen you in six months I'm like wow it's going <laughs> you know it's, it just things just keep happening and happening and happening and definitely for the good yeah but you, do, you still need to manage this sort of especially the media sort of thing sometimes yeah. you get a bit too much so you need to be mindful of that but honestly it started from a like I didn't end getting over a, a private Facebook post because mm -hmm. at that time back in September I only had Facebook yeah. and I uh, woke up the next morning and Aye, it's been absolutely mental, but just read the wave and I can't, I'm just blown away the, do you know, how much support I've mm -hmm. got and love and people that I'm helping. I thought, you know, I'll get to go to work that I'm mm -hmm. doing, but I thought I would need to go into like football academies and yeah. do a lot of work in the media to get that, you know, letters sent to me mm -hmm. and um, messages, amazing yeah. messages, but to get it already, you know, just by being open and brave is blown away and somebody said to me a while back you just can't underestimate the power of his ability you know yeah. as you said there's no many years out there and I wish I had role models like myself mm -hmm. growing up so aye I'm glad now I can be another pillar of that community <laughs> and see beforehand obviously before because I know you you told like your friends and family before you announced it to the footballing world as it was aye. you must have had about 8 million fears going through your head but could you have ever imagined it would turn out as positively as it has or did you have all those different worst case scenarios floating about at the time ah, yeah, it takes a lot of work can I yeah. be honest to really iron name it mm -hmm. um, I, going back it's took nobody can prepare yet I came out to my friends and family April 2021 mm -hmm. and it was a slow drip feed process and to get to that that required a lot of work but yeah. for some people um, coming out and accepting themselves mm -hmm. it just goes hand in hand yeah for me walking about the street like with a boyfriend or whatever yeah um or sit and have a conversation at a cafe and talking about like rupaul's drag race Aye. that's like if you don't know that's like the, the olympics for lgbt yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> you love it right so um i just talking to my pal about that and i'd still be because the football community never knew i'd be yeah. like, in a cafe just terrified no like oh no somebody watching somebody looking i still took a lot of work so april 21 i came out but it was like close to obviously September when I that's when I realized and I was like, Do you know what? I don't give a monkey's anymore yeah. if anybody finds out it yeah. knows. And it was a sort of eureka moment. I was at my first uh, Pride march in mm -hmm. Benidorm, wrong right. places. First time I was in Benidorm, <laughs> by the way, it's <laughs> down like that. Um I didn't they, how raunchy can you go in here? Can you talk? Mate, you can go as much as you want. I didn't get to see Sticky Vicky go right. to, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is it Vicky's sister? Is it Vicky's daughter? I don't know. It's a anybody? generation, a generation, isn't it? I think it is. Have you been? I've never been, but I'm I'm aware. <laughs> um, but I was there. It's brilliant, man. Just the marches and just the love, and it's just like a huge, big parade, and everybody's yeah. just having a great time. And my pal wanted to get a picture of me, and she was like going to put it on her socials, and she was like, "Oh no, I forgot. You can't put it on your socials because of the football." Aye. Pondered that thought as we walked back to the hotel and then sat in my veranda. Veranda's a pure glass, would you mud in it? Uh, Let's go posh, balcony. Uh, balcony, aye. <laughs> veranda, God. Uh, 
My, I, I'm a weird accent, by the way. You'll notice there's like, going to be a bit of Edinburgh and everything, but <laughs> I am Glaswegian just for everybody. <laughs> um, I so pondered my veranda and I was just like, what am I doing? Like how much years of pain and suffering have I had? Mm. Living a double life, pretending to everybody. Um, I could actually help people. Um, right. People that are struggling like me, that can't just be right. beat me. So I just went, fuck it. And just did a Facebook post to tell my football community I mm -hmm. didn't feel the need to you know, sit them to the dressing room. Aye, aye. Boys, I'm gay and I've always, you know, all that emotion. Aye. I can't bother that. So I did that and then woke up and it was just, firstly, all the boys messaged me like, but nothing changes, love you yeah. bits. You're still one of the boys and that was a big worry. Like, I love the part. Like, anyone that plays football, if they're saying they just play football for just to go and be on the pitch, they're lying. It's the dressing room, isn't it? It's... You, honestly, I aye. don't want to get a percentage away, but... A huge, huge party is that part of the right. but you know, you're in football as well. Of course, it is. Uh, it's massive, and that's my worry. And I thought, coming out, is that going to change? You know? Aye, aye. But uh, no, it's definitely not. Sorry, I'm waffling, but no, uh, not at all. How was the fear when you woke up that morning? You're like, I'll put this out there. Aye, there was still because you still have this sort of internalized homophobia. That you, it's I'm, it's pretty much a way new, but you still yeah. have that. You know, just how people are going to react. Really, that's yeah, it. Yeah. But aye, it was pretty terrifying but in the same time just I was filled with immense pride because I was finally following my gut do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I've always known for hormone changes your body you know it yeah. was, I was proud of myself but also ah, you are terrified because you mm -hmm. don't know and you start seeing it getting traction and crazy yeah, yeah. traction to the point then I it went a bit viral I was like god and then there's all these media outlets trying to get yeah, hold yeah. of you I was like oh no it's, it does get a bit Aye. fearful so you need to have good people around you Hundred percent, and you were talking about the internalised homophobia, and I was I was curious from the point of view of when you'd initially come out in in April before, obviously you'd announced it to the the football and population. How hard was that for you growing up? Because even before you've got to that football, but that bit you've just said there about you're having a brilliant night out, and you take a picture, and it's that we thought of. I can put that up there. Whereas if it was just, you were just doing your thing, you'd be like, I post it, whatever. But how hard was that for you kind of growing up and, and having that in your head all the time? Like, oh, I need to just keep this internally. Aye, horrific, I'll be honest. Um, I have had uh, a lot of demons, mm -hmm. as I always say. And quick, a quick fast forward, I'll rewind in a sec. But, you know, right now I'm at a point that when the demons do come, of course, you know, yeah. we all have down days. Yeah. You know? But when they do come, I just sit them down there and have a cup of tea and we just, we just work it out, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas before, you know, you're just fighting tooth and nail with them. Aye, uh, there's so many periods that I can dive into. So one of the parts where that I was trying to fight it for a long year, so I was like, I can't be gay, I'm no gay. Cause what age were you roughly when you kind of knew? <sighs> Straight away. Yeah. Fair, well, yeah. Was it? <laughs> there's a wee bit of funny. You need to laugh about it, ain't Because I'm happy and <laughs> loving life, but... <laughs> Uh, probably when I was at Motherwell, I was like 13, 14. So I was Motherwell with like Slaney, with a good group, that right. nucleus. So it was like Slaney, Stevie Lawless, uh -huh. Bob McHugh, all went on to have great careers. Um, what a player Slaney was, by the way. I know Aye. he's like pure in the limelight for media, but see at that age, oh my goodness. Still a riot, still Aye. hilarious, but what a player, man. Like, Did you think he would have been on and... Oh, you know he was. He was Aye. just miles there, day. He was water off. Rapids, like, tricking him. Aye, brilliant. Um, Aye. But that during that period, of course, what did they talk about in the dressing room? You Aye. know what I mean? And at that time, it was all the nuts in the zoo magazines. So remember the softcore? God. <laughs> remember them? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the names. Uh, no, can't remember them. But aye, they were there. Aye. And of course, they're all talking about them. So I tried to buy one. I'm like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, why isn't it working for me? You know, aye. why am I, you know? Aye. It's horrible. And then when you do find out what you are, mm. um, just filled with impending doom. You're just like, oh no, like Aye. all my, because you're good at football, all your pals are in that professional academy set up. Mm -hmm. Boys at school, you know, it's like that football, it's, it's a tight knit group, mm -hmm. but you just know you're completely different for them as yeah. well. So I, you're just filled with so much pain. But playing on the field was my sort of antidepressant, you know, I could yeah. just get a release for that 90 minutes. And then after that, as you said, just a wee moment. Sometimes it, you'd be having a laugh at them, great, Aye. but then just wee moments would hit you again. It's, and I think that's just stuck with me for so many years and it's formed in different ways. When I went to 18, I was with Adrian and got a bad injury. So I had no 
had no qualifications because I thought I was going to be a footballer. Aye. So went back to college and worked my way up to uni. During that time, luckily touch with 23, 24, I, I went, I was at the game for, I think it was 22, was it? So four years out because I got told to kind of play football again. Aye. And I uh, played uni football, got back into it. And then through that period, I was actually trying to convince myself that I was straight. And, um, I suppose with the injury and that as well, that's a dark period. Because if somebody's saying to you, I'm taking your dream away here, I know. and you've got everything else wrestling in your mind, that's a that's I, a dark place. I'll be honest, I did go off the rails a wee bit and uh, did struggle uh, massively. And I just realised how much our game whole football was and yeah. how much football meant to me. I just thought about it every day and that's what it can't be me. So I, luckily I, I found the gym and I went, and that probably did help. Mm -hmm. You know, I battered the gym at that point and take your mind off it. It was really good for me. Um, but aye, there was a period once I started getting back in it that, I was it right because I, I don't want to blame it solely in the restroom. It's not mm -hmm. just restroom; it's society, it's culture. You know, just the things you're hearing about that time. But Aye. being a gay male, male, and I just believed him. I thought I can't be so. Yeah, convinced myself and fought tooth and nail with it. So just worked on the the masculine side of me right. and gymmed it, and you know, tried to be a lad and all Aye. that stuff. But your gut's the most powerful thing, Gary. You just know, deep yeah. down, you know, and it just for years it that sort of narrative just played out even getting into you know then about us played semi-pro and the tooth and the nail was when i was in a relationship with a lovely last we've actually reconnected now which is mm -hmm. amazing and it was that once that broke up i was like i can't put my put them through that my family her family her, yeah. and i can't put myself through that again yeah um, so it took me about two years to get to april 2021 mm -hmm. um a lot of counseling um, a lot of journaling uh, meditation mindfulness Wim Hof mm -hmm. he's pure Aye. everybody's into Wim Hof nowadays but I would just used to watch all his stuff back then Aye. it was massive for me and just finally like, like come to terms with it mm -hmm. um, and I would probably say the real it was just football Aye. because I was good at football Aye. and being quite masculine I just couldn't understand I couldn't put two and two together that you can still be gay yeah. And that's a thing why I always want to come on and do these things that mm -hmm. you can be gay and but yeah. just normal guys. Mm -hmm. We can just, you know, people maybe design culture just put us in a box to, you know, be effeminate and like pink things. Yeah. And of course we can like that as well and RuPaul's drag race, we all love yeah. that. But we can also like football and be good at it. But me saying that to you, that's took me a long time to mm -hmm. get to But you can even tell it. you're beaming when you're you're talking about it now. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Then yeah. I, I suppose that's the that's the real winner for you because you've you've spent so long having that kind of playing out in your head and obviously with anything that you play in your head it's always a worst case scenario it's never a good outcome never ever is it a good outcome you're always like zero to a million right away I know. was there a when it when it came to that april point was there a, a trigger moment for you that you're just like i can i do this anymore or was it in your head that it's always going to come to this point where i'm, I'm going to i'm going to tell everybody so depending that with that lovely human being mm -hmm. who I probably still keep in touch with that last year, I, mean, I was just like, I can't put myself yeah. over through that. I can't. I, I need to get. Mm -hmm. I need to work on myself. I fully mm -hmm. accept right. it. Um, so that was it. That was the journey that I had to to go on, and that was a. So you try to get to that point to come yeah. out. It was. Yeah. And on, uh, if people are, I hope, I hope it doesn't trigger too many people if they're mm -hmm. going through the same thing or they're struggling. I mean, I've. People have reached out to me as well. It's, it can be such a tough thing, and that's maybe what mainstream media don't really understand it how mm -hmm. how hard it can be. You know, um, we've no good at, right. at times. Um, for some people, it can be easy, and it's great. And I did have a support of family as well, but mm -hmm. it's just that battle on your head. You know, if you maybe don't fit that the status quo of a yeah. gay man, yeah, you're like, who can I? Who is it out there like me? Yeah. Um, no, obviously, fast forward to now, there is people out there, which mm -hmm. is amazing, and. Mm -hmm. And definitely helped me as well you know the people out there like especially here in scotland you've got lloyd wilson and greg napier out yeah. referees and Lloyd to speak to fairly regularly um yeah. great guy and they I just can't now now looking back you just can't underestimate the power of uh, role models and visibility yeah. being in that public eye and honestly no regrets yeah what a journey it is <laughs> <Brilliant. Not that. laughs> how was your um how did you position it with your family a uh, good question um, you're good at this. <laughs> well, do, do you know the reason I ask? Yeah. It's because I, I know that that's probably the thing that maybe a lot of young girls or boys will be watching, mm -hmm. and maybe they're at that point where they're like, 
Do people know? Do they not know? So I, I, I was curious to how you kind of handled that transition because mm. your family's the kind of the be all and end all really. It's yeah. um, I just had I G'd myself up because obviously doing all the work on, my, on myself, you know, to come to terms with it all, as I've discussed, but it was one of the, like, probably the weed, glass weed, I'm going to say weed, but that's the, what <laughs> everyone calls a glass weed, <laughs> watch, being a glass weed, um, <laughs> I just went, fuck it, man, I could die tomorrow. Yeah. And I've lived in pain and suffered all my life, you know what I mean, with all this nonsense, and you know, it's created so many mental health issues, um, of course I'm open to talk about it, but I just went, fuck it, that's all enough you've lived in pain all your, all your life mm -hmm. go and just do it yeah just do it what's, what's the worst that could happen mm -hmm. and i just i probably went into that with my glass half empty yeah being the, quite the pessimist yeah. thinking uh oh but no it was brilliant all of them everyone was brand new even like my sort of straight pals were like mm -hmm. brand new and the, i saying when you're being your true self the people are meant to come into your life will come into your life and yeah. the people that drift it drift it and that's fair play but one that got me was my bro and um, he just went, stand up, I don't give a fuck. As long as you're happy, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. That's all he said about it. And we never really discussed it after that. And I'm like, that's all he's had to say though, isn't it? It's on easy day. Um, but I, I know people out there have not have they got that supportive mm -hmm. background um, and there is support out there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Go and, go and look outside it. I'm a Stonewall ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, there's great work with Leap Sport here. Um, further afield you've got lgbt helpline like these things that can definitely help you and support you and there is mm -hmm. people out there um to just speak to yeah um because it can be a tough tough time to come to terms because we're we are still a minority even though you know i'm talking about a lot of negatives but the world mm -hmm. is definitely getting better with us yeah you still need to keep fighting the fight definitely yeah i would i would agree with you so from a fast forward to a, a footballing point of view right. what was your what was going through your mind at that point? What was your worst fears about about it, you coming out and it not going the way that you'd hoped? Aye. <laughs> I, I honestly, as we discussed, I just thought that the part in dressing room, I'm like, I, my old, obviously it was my older team that I came, mm -hmm. out, with, came out to, I just thought, like, I'm a pure clown in that. Yeah. When, in the right manner. Yeah. When, it, when it's go time, you need to screw the nut. Yeah. But when the gaffer's away and stuff, you're in the Yeah. I'll just love to go in. I don't yeah. know if I Right. So that, man, you're in a, and a child comes out and you just go nuts I just was like oh no and also like being an older player now that I would give the younger players advice and all mm. that I just thought oh no they're gonna think it's a bit awkward and all that but no it really wasn't it, it was brilliant mm. uh, it was brand new and uh, that's what's probably surprised me it was brilliant yeah. um, even the awkward things like everyone's gonna think about like showering and all that stuff like yeah. I think he's a monkey do you no. know what I mean if not it's just but uh, like more banter and part about it aye. um aye and then just the lovely messages that they, they'll go which has surprised me even the boys feel like i don't know they can i was worried about the ones feel like a small town or like yeah the ones that normally they've seen a lot of gay people yeah uh, aye, they were all brand new and that just also translate on the pitch staff other staff gaffers coaches everyone all brand new it's maybe fans that we need to work on both online yeah. And on the stadium and that's all forms of discrimination of yeah. course but how do you cope with that though when you're playing because it's mm. i always hear when players talk about like fans etc like oh block it out which is easy to do when it's a seventy thousand stadium but <laughs> if you're at a game where there's a thousand two thousand people you hear every uh, shout but how do you hard, how do you deal with that side of it? uh so far touchwood i've uh i've not heard anything on the pitch yeah um i've not heard anything I, from fans mm -hmm. what i've heard um of course i'm not going to give too much away but documentary may highlight yeah. something else yeah. okay um but if i did honestly because it's all new to me and stuff mm -hmm. and i've not really had a lot of direct homophobic abuse yeah. like actually face to face i don't know how i'd react to be honest gary I, uh, um it's just still new world yeah. to me but i've had it online of course i had letters sent to me that i'm going to hell and what i'm doing is horrible and i need <laughs> conversion therapy and i'm like oh buddy get a rest man do you know what i just wish i was like i just wish i could meet you and sit with you for a coffee yeah. and just have a chat with them man and just be like what is this narrative yeah. that you're playing you read that we're less horrible people like I, you can't change being gay you no. can't and this conversion therapy but you why should you i know like 
you can't change it. Like you can't change your gut. You're born gay, and I yeah. believe that honestly. And these people just sending the having the time and effort to go and send a letter to somebody. Yeah. That all I'm trying to do is just help other people. Like that's why I'm putting myself out there and we say punt myself out there. That's not the right term. But, <laughs> um, but do you think? It, and I suppose it's hard, but that must get you in the gut as well when you get a letter like that or something like that because it's yeah. you you've you've done all this work internally to speak to your family, speak to your football community. You're feeling brilliant about what you've done, and you're at a place where you want to be at, and you've got these kind of just the digs that come. I know. Can I take you back to, to how you felt maybe three, four years previous? I know. Uh, the, the, twi the Twitter thing, it's always Twitter. It's always Twitter yeah. that you get negative. And it's just the way our brain's designed and the beauty of how these pe people that make social media design their websites. Yeah. It's, you don't focus on all the positives. No. You just always look Not at that too easy. stupid 1% no. that no. you're negative. It's so annoying. I'm getting better at it though, I'll be honest. I mm. am getting much better. Um you just always zone in on that eh? right. and it pure gets to you um, but it is just that 1% and you know mm -hmm. you need to do you need to really reflect on it but look look at all the amazing stuff people are saying of course yeah. you're going to get that um, but uh, the, the letters when you get in a direct letter it's pretty helpful and it just came at a stupid a, a tough time because on that day I'll never forget I missed an absolute sitter so I got it right. on a Saturday my, the chairman gave me it before the game mm -hmm. I just put it obviously where my seat was we drew three each, but I missed an absolute set and I was right. raging myself. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. Walking over to the right, we sort of broke on a transition. But boy was bombing down the right. I've made the run, back post, perfect ball. All you have to do just touch just it. Nod it in. <laughs> and then a fucking 50 pound speed man, it's fucking hit the top of my head and went in the bar. Oh, so all I'm doing it when I'm going home, I'm just thinking about that. And then I was like, oh, there's a letter. Then it must be something positive because I've had loads of letters of support and love. Opened it up. And I have. Uh, it's always those times but I'm, like, oh. <laughs> I'm like Jesus Christ and luckily like you know I've got good people that you know I can Aye. vent to and speak about these things because you need to man it's, it's a, it can be very very tough and hot there is where well, you like it and there is horrible people there yeah. wanting to get to you and for the best of times they actually motivate me you know mm -hmm. and moving to Bonnie League and finally getting a chance to play in the leagues um, you know for the bit of stuff like mm -hmm. oh you can't just get a move because you're gay and or oh, this is just because you're getting to meet all this stuff and all oh, what they to fair, I chuckled a wee bit at the one that said oh they'll be called bonnie rig pansies <laughs> but as um, if you've not been playing football your whole life I know. Do you know what I mean it's but the they sort of motivate me I'll be honest they yeah. give me a bit of fire in my belly and empower I'm like I'm way fucking Aye, I'm sure you. do you know what I mean um, but uh, by and large positive it yeah. has been positive how Before. do you balance it with the because obviously we, we spoke about it when you just came in. Your diary must be mental just now, but you've obviously still got to train, you've still got to play. How do you find the balance of... Because that whole media side could be massively draining, I would imagine. And then training's draining, football's draining. You've obviously got pressure on you from there, but how do you find that balance? Great question. I It was a struggle at first because nobody can prepare you that. Like, right. It was on Lorraine and... On Britain and all the tabloid, everyone's wanting a PC and stuff. Mm. It's it's hard to turn down because you're a bit like, right, when have I got a chance to go on a range? You know what I mean? Aye. What an unbelievable opportunity, and that was tough. And mm. uh, I probably couldn't do that type of playing in League Two. I'll be honest, yeah. there is a bit of a gulf between Lowland and League Two. But I, the gaffer Jimmy, um, oh, he's called Jimmy, but his name's Martin Scott. Uh, he was brilliant with me to fair. He was excellent. He understood like mm. what's what's going on and lucky obviously it's only part time Tuesday, Thursday but you just need to be careful eh? can I, can I do too much man um, as I learned that first sort of media onslaught when I first done it mm -hmm. probably took too much on and yeah. try, try to save the world you know getting Aye. so inspired by all these men I'm like I'm going to save the world <laughs> <laughs> I'm the gay Jesus <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, no you, you you quickly get put back down to earth like Alexander calm down you're a human being man <laughs> You've got your own priorities. You need to work. Day, you've got your day job. You need. To, you know what I mean? Um, and I learned that, and I got better at it as times went on. And um, you start to learn now, like when it's going to be like a big bit of a no, media right. bubble or a media onslaught. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you just get better, better at managing it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I since sort of joining Bonnie, like I've kind of stripped back everything. Right. Um, 
you know what I mean? It's my pop at the leagues and I'm getting absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. um, club are brilliant. Everyone up and down. Fans, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, was that a worry as well? Because obviously you were at Gala when everything happened, but then you've obviously switching again and you've then thinking, I've got to start again a wee bit here. And, mm -hmm. and I had to turn down Hunter, so I'll be honest. Um, there was a bit, obviously, got a bit of, because the first in the league since, I think Fashnu, but obviously first Scottish player, but I think Fashnu had a stint at Airdrie or Hearts, but I first only yeah. out Scottish player and obviously only active, so I, it just got so much traction. And yeah. This time around, I was just like, I'll do a wee bit, mm -hmm. but I refused a lot, which was good because I just know what I could do in that week, and you need to be careful, no burn yourself out. Yeah. I've watched your podca podcast for a while, and you people, the guests and stuff, when they get that media craze and they talk about it and you just need to be so, so mindful and not yeah. doing too much because you can overcook it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be honest, the first sort of media craze when I did come out, I probably overcooked it a wee bit. Yeah. Um, try to take on too much. But you just, you learn, don't you? Yeah. And you kick on and obviously now we've got soon coming up to a sort of third sort of media mm -hmm. wee yeah. craze. Um, I can talk, I'm open to talk about it. Well, as well. I, seamlessly linked. <laughs> Into your um, your BBC documentary, so it's called Out in the Pitch. Yes, this will obviously come out after the documentary has been released. So, what is what is it the main point of the documentary, and what made you want to do it? Okay, got you could at this point. Probably questions. I just I I knew how tough it was for me growing up as a discussing the podcast and now we've not actually gone into my wee Ned phase I didn't actually talk about that by the way the podcast uh, I did have a pure Ned phase by right. the way you wouldn't even imagine me looking at pure <laughs> metrosexual and all that but I was a wee bam by the right. way I was a wee bam for Bailiston uh, what changed what, what took you at the Ned phase I moved to Cumbernauld <laughs> in fact, I know I don't know how it actually changed when I went up there I <laughs> um, moved to, went out to Cumbernauld so I was a wee bam um, but I grown up in a sense it, it, I don't grown up in East End you do you learn a lot of values looking yeah. back do you know I mean that street wise that mm -hmm. a lot of people don't have yeah. do you know what I mean um, you suss people look a lot of quick, a lot quicker but growing up in that tough environment it was and then knowing you're gay I, I just begin that journey of like yeah. not being able to process mm -hmm. who I was and Definitely, as my later teens and that, I developed anxiety and a bit of depression and I was so, so hard on myself. It's probably le le led on me getting a lot of fatigue and probably signs of burnout now and mm -hmm. again, just by like imploding. Yeah. Fighting that internalised homophobia for so long and I just always thought, that can it just be me? Yeah. It's only, yeah. you know, it can it be? Um, and I, since... Uh, since you know coming out and my journey and seeing just blown away but just how many messages and letters i'm receiving the, of all ages and yeah how they're struggling and stuff and yeah how this really helped them i'm like oh, this is amazing man and, pretty and, therapeutic for you in a way as well uh, and again you know and i can only it's not just me i can only mm -hmm. comment on the people that i've been inspired by and that have helped me and i just the opportunity came along and uh, there's been a couple opportunities people mm -hmm. that want to do about work but you go and meet them and you just it needs to fit and needs yeah. to feel right and mm -hmm. met craig at the bbc and cracking guy and he was talking about you know his, his son was in, the, in your community as well and this is how he, he wants to plan it out and stuff and i was just like that could be fucking powerful no, because right. one it could help and empower somebody that's going through a tough time but also i want to try and get to the ones that are on them maybe cusp of being homophobic maybe no understanding the terminologies they're saying but yeah. the pal next to them could be fucking gay do you know what I mean right. hopefully this and my story and speaking to these powerful people mm -hmm. um, and sort of shed light on that yeah. um, and also just shed light on Scottish football and where we're at with that it's, it's quite some harrowing stats and facts on it mm -hmm. um, but honestly I absolutely loved it and it, doing like the, the voiceovers they, yeah. they call it the dubbing yeah uh, doing all that and you actually get to see wee clips when you're doing the voiceover and that and just having tears in my eyes it was just Aye. so powerful eh? just like oh my god man this is that's me on the telly like just it's a journey for you uh, though isn't it it's my wee ma's in it as well and brilliant <laughs> my ma and my wee dog as well <laughs> brilliant wee zara's running about <laughs> daft like it's amazing eh? i honestly i'm, I'm trying not to get emotional but it's just on i just can't believe this is my Aye. life and I hope that it can translate onto that screen how much 
passion and love that I've put into it, you mm -hmm. know, and the people that we've interviewed, like them sharing their story, man, it's just not like you too much away, but yeah. we spoke to Soltair Fissel, mm -hmm. the LGBT football team, yep. and some of the, some of the, the before we obviously did a train session but before it, some of the chats we had in that dressing room and man, it's like, I thought, man, I thought, oh, I had it tough, man. I grew up fucking hell, man. Yeah. Uh, pure touch. Every interview I did on that, honestly, it was like, my heartstrings was like, I was got to say, did it take sorry. you back to your kind of younger period? Pure triggering, I was like, pure trying to hold in the tears. Aye. Like, Aye. honestly, the bomb lip was like Aye. gone every time, man. But I suppose, Aye. though, you, you spent that long thinking there must be other people like that, and then you're in that room with I, the other people that are like... Pops, I, I'm, I'm like, I can't believe this in my life, because for years I've just fought it and fought against it, you know, I mean, so much pain and so much suffering, and so I, I'll be honest and say I've had terrible mental health issues, and... We are, and that was the common that was the main common denominator and mm -hmm. I've, as I still have down days and that but my bounce back now is incredible right. in comparison mm -hmm. to back then you know yeah. and I just do not want anybody to go through that again mm -hmm. and I hope that obviously it's aired in Scotland Monday 8pm BBC BBC One I but it's on iPlay for a year so yeah. honestly if you're struggling with your sexuality please just give it a, give it a pop and mm -hmm. hopefully it can help you a wee bit yeah really. how did you feel when you finished it because it, it must have been like your, your last six months were probably like a series of journeys just yeah, through I, your last five six seven years it's i just look at i just can you believe it I, I struggle being proud of myself i'll be honest with you like i mm -hmm. struggle to like be actually proud of my, like a lot of things that i've done in my life yeah. you know um that people should be proud of themselves or happy with i don't know why i've just never felt like happy or proud of yeah. myself but what, there's many reasons that can right. be but I it's one of the things I'm like I'm so fucking proud of that right. I'm so proud of that I'm, I can't believe the people we got on uh, speaking so openly and mm -hmm. everybody we just chatted about I just give them a, a big massive cuddle I don't know before it I just thought oh no man this fancy production Aye. Aye. <laughs> how am I going to fit in and all that pure, it'll be dead posh and Aye. how am I going to be a reporter on this <laughs> how am I going to like talk you know, like, to these <laughs> fancy folk <laughs> How is that possible? Um, brilliant, and I blown away everybody. Like shout out to everybody that was helped me through it, and all them in the BBC disclosure team. They were brilliant with me. They knew I wasn't like a reporting journalist, yeah. so they took the time out to help me. And I, they seem really, really happy with it. And but then you just, you just need to hope it. Yeah, it translates well on the screen. Which I, fingers, fingers crossed. But I suppose if one person watches it and take something out of it and job done for you honestly 110 percent. that's the that's the main people that i want to mm -hmm. watch it but i would love if you know the homophobic person yeah that's maybe got a homophobic son yeah nah, homo uh, it's the homophobic person that's got a gay son yeah giving him a hard time yeah. or gay gay daughter anyone um and giving him a hard time mm -hmm. um i would love if they watch that and be like, yeah oh wait a minute here yeah fucked up here Aye. you know i'm doing it or something that just at, at the stand just giving people mm -hmm. pelters or whatever and hopefully it, it helps them because mm -hmm. again we're just normal people mm -hmm. yes we want like i'm not being dead serious here but we want to be included in the bar yeah. or in part yeah. of but it's to be consensual yeah, do you know what i mean it can't be you can't just be attacking us no. you know there's to be a, a back and forth but i we're all just normal people and that's yeah. hopefully it translates on the screen Mate, I'm buzzing to see this. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a follow-up. And it's obviously, it's not directly linked to the documentary. It's more of a general one for me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, from a from a footballing point of view, I'm looking at it as a fan. And there's so little coverage of gay footballers. I think it, it, the only, when I had to look back, the only other one I could think of was Thomas Hitzelsberger. Aye. But it was only after he'd left the English Premiership. And I think he'd moved to the US and he'd retired but there's not been any other examples. See, from your perspective, what do you think football can do better at this point? Because there must be there must be gay footballers that are playing just now, going in the law of averages of the amount of people playing football. There must be, but from what do you think needs to be done better from a footballing point of view? I mean, is it, they're doing a lot. Rainbow mm -hmm. Lace's campaign, you know, um, football versus homophobia strategies, LGBT fan groups, all these things that are great, you mm -hmm. know, one love armbands. 
think clubs are, you know, yeah. they're, I think they're do, from that side of it, they're doing clubs and stuff. Are, yeah. They're great. Um, and then when the, these, when like the, the rainbow season stuff campaigns go on or you do see from like the main sport tabloids underneath it's just like why does that why do we need this why is this news yeah. you know what's the point in this and i actually got a wee bit of it as well when like they got a bit of traction for like clyde one or clyde World super scoreboard mm -hmm. all these things and they put up myself and the majority of comments weren't necessarily homophobic it's yeah. just like right so what i just yeah. went to <sighs> and i kept quiet at that and i I'm pretty certain the documentary will answer that in mm -hmm. regards to, you know, you have no idea what we need to go through. Yeah. You have no idea what's actually happened in Scottish football. Mm -hmm. and we speak to the SFA in the documentary and it's harrowing the stats that they give us. And yeah. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. But hopefully that mm -hmm. that will explain that. Why is this? Why does this need to be? We need role models, mm -hmm. need visibility. Um, in the documentary talk as well about the women's game, it's exemplary. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. don't need to talk. You don't need to commit. And I always say you don't need to do added if you can begin that process to begin to tell your friends and family mm -hmm. and then get to a point that someone in the dressing room asks you what you're doing at the weekend yeah. and you don't need to lie you don't need to yeah. know, don't feel that hide. twinge in your stomach when you need to try and come up with something to me that's job done yeah. um, if you do feel the need if you're at a position that's you know in the higher leagues and you feel that could and mm -hmm. you're in a position that you can do that do it but a, a, a weird bit of advice for anyone um, which is quite probably odd and you wouldn't expect it would be I would my advice for people if they want to do you know and come up to the public and stuff and do it that way you need to build up your armour mm -hmm. you need to build up and fully accept yourself because unfortunately you're going to get a bit of shit yeah. you're going to be, get a bit of flack for no better term and you need to be able to handle that yeah. because if you know it can have a serious serious impact on mm -hmm. you Um that's a, that's a massive, massive thing I want to convey because mm -hmm. as much as there's lovely people out there, yeah. Yeah. when you lose a football game, you know yourself, um, people go for the jugular and uh, it takes a lot of work mm -hmm. to be able to just brush that off. Yeah. Um, but you you said you're a fan, but you're not just a fan, you know, you, you're involved in football. Are you an amateur, yeah. An amateur. And that's like... Armies is wild. Oh, like right. the, there's a massive, and to be fair, the the league that I'm in, the the GDSFC, they do a lot of work on it because it. I think it goes back to I can see what we were talking about earlier, like I can East End of Glasgow scheme culture. Right. I can't be accepting, but it's a kind of people need educated. Right. They they need educated from from grassroots up the way, and it is improving, but. Don't get me wrong, like there is times where you're on the sidelines and you're like, you can't say stuff like that. Right. Like, you have no idea who's on that pitch. Like, 22 guys playing. For all we know, there could be six of them that are in your position. Yep. And obviously, there's not a big crowd there. So you hear everything. And if you've got demons in your head as it is, the last thing you need right. is someone else jabbing that you consider a teammate or a supporter. Or So it is, it's... And I, I just think in my head... If there's those issues at grassroots, you multiply it obviously by the fans going up the way and the, the clubs are bigger, the expectations bigger. Don't get me wrong, you've still got, I think when you look at FIFA, etc., there's masses of work to be done because I think they're more concentrated on the monetary side of things than, well, you look at the World Cup. I know. It was kind of... I, and I, I did respond, you know, and I did my wee bit for the Qatar, but... There's only so much negative you can the, yeah. the, the kickback for that. I yeah. could take I could handle and I could yeah. take, I'll be honest. Um I want to do my work, you know. I didn't even mention time for inclusive education, an unbelievable LGBT charity in Scotland mm -hmm. quality. They go in and do workshops and educate teachers within schools, but also I'm doing work them to go around football academies, mm -hmm. professional football academies in Scotland have done Livingston and St. Mirren so far. Um and then majority of the Premier League clubs have signed up. You enjoy that side of it? Oh, brilliant. Yeah. I think it's just so powerful because mm -hmm. actually with Celtic and Rangers being in the league as well, I, I was going to say I can. Oh, that's a cardinal <laughs> sin in that glass region <laughs> podcast. Oh my goodness gracious me. Whoa. Ken, Ouija, oh. jeez. Um, <laughs> I, you completely threw me off there, but uh, it's good because I sort of knew them and you get boys on loan for you, the yeah. clubs for you. Yeah. It's good to have that human element. Uh, someone that maybe that they think being gay is like all oh, this taboo and mm -hmm. 
It's just and it's just talking about like perjurative language. Perj- Where did I get a word from? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've need a, I need a coffee. Today. Oh my god, perjurative. Is that the right word, eh? No idea. Perjurative. Do we get is that right? I don't even know. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but just talking about like the terminologies and stuff what you're saying in the dressing room can affect mm-hmm. people and things like that. Um But as you discussed there as well, like in Glasgow, oh my god, there's a plethora of that's an award, that's not comfy. Um, there's a plethora of parlor that we've got and yeah. words yeah. that Nabdale Dale uses that you can use. Yeah. You don't need to use homophobic, you know what I mean, or any discriminatory. Aye. Do you know what I mean? There's absolute hunters um, that they can batter out with. Aye. The mm. English people look at you like, wow. That, do you know, I've had to actually tone down my accent. It's a, it's a bit of a, my brother takes it absolute piss at me. He's just like, you're a chicter. I'm like, I'm no, I'm actually in Glasgow. I've moved back now. And he's like, nah, you're still a chicter on that, on that Lorraine Kelly, you know that. That must have been a, a high point. You're like, you're getting asked to go on Lorraine Kelly, the biggest breakfast show <laughs> in the UK. She was amazing, to be fair, but I was a bag of jaggies. Oh, oh were you? my God, bag of jaggies. I absolutely see him when I went back in his dressing room. And that's what I'm talking about, the banter. So did that. And I think I did have training that night. I got flight back or the next day. And they were just like, as soon as I walked in, they were just like, lull, 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 lull. see my first word. See if you look at back, I couldn't get my first word out. Because <laughs> maybe, like, you sit down in this, like, I was right, and there's honestly about 50 cameras, right? Everywhere. Okay. And she's like, just, you'll be fine, just camp, just take deep breaths. And I'm like, this just hope shaking and my lip was shaking everything I was like oh my god so then I just take try and no look at the camera so I'm looking somewhere upwards right thinking right that's my wee breathing space mm-hmm. so nobody can see me in the camera and then when she starts talking I didn't realize there's a camera directly there <laughs> so there's as soon as it zooms at me I just look fucking terrified <laughs> oh but I, as soon as I got the first word that um it was better Aye. and then obviously that was the very first one I done so She's like the supreme pro as well. Ah, she's brilliant. Yeah. Right. She's brilliant. But oh, bag of jackets. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It must have been surreal for you though, having all the doubts, and then you're on Lorraine. You've got people at like Tom Daly reaching out to you. <laughs> going from like a couple of months before it, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, to those people messaging you and, and talking about it. That's how do you get your head around that? I know. Even like, well, even further back, like being a wee scheme boy and like uh, people from like the scheme have actually messaged me like, oh my God, look at you now, I can't even believe like even think back to then like, but now I, obviously when I was going through a tough time like with my demons and I just thought there's no way out for this, mm-hmm. you know, and um, <laughs> to then actually just trusting your gut, following it um, and taking that leap, I, I can't believe it. Yeah. I was, that's how, so I remember when Tom Daly's message I seen it. I seen it on a on the car school. You know mm-hmm. what a car Aye. school is when you're probably gonna explain that. It's like when you're it's a football. You're like it's actually hard to explain. So it's like four or five years in a car Aye, school. You're just you pretty, tons. You don't want to be the designated driver in Aye. a car school. Aye, basically, and uh, <laughs> especially going to Gala Shields. <laughs> Love used to bet Gala, but <laughs> that journey was madness. Uh, so I was, uh, I seen it first on an Instagram message, mm-hmm. a lovely heartfelt message, and I was like, I feel welled up in the car, man, and. And I, do you know that way? I, and I couldn't even, obviously, I'm with boys, my football team, Aye. and I couldn't even give a fuck that I was crying Aye. to that. And I was like, oh my God, I've came on leaps and bounds that I can, you know, just Aye. be myself now and no need to hide my phone. That was massive. Mm-hmm. See, no need to hide your phone. Aye. Like, you know, no, well, you will be aware of the app that all us gay men <laughs> use in the UK. I think it's, in fact, it's worldwide, isn't it? See, having a. <laughs> Move that. Sorry, I've just moved that. But it's even having to worry about stuff like that. Aye, see, so haven't seen no being able to like, I put that in a hidden folder like four or five Aye. away, and just having your phone out or like Aye. you know we we go on each other's phones sometimes as well to like change tunes or get tunes mm-hmm. in that, and no one was ever on my phone ever. Obviously, Aye. do you know what I mean? No one. Um, the fact that you just didn't matter anywhere. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Aye. And it was nice that the fact that when it did come out and obviously that these strong bonds, it was good that. See people that uh, just they just had a chat right Xander, what can we say? What yeah. can we do? I'm like, don't fucking change. Aye. Be Aye. the same. Just be the same. Like mm-hmm. you've not done you don't do it and rang anyway. Like mm-hmm. just be the same. Like, so I'm not gonna be like, oh no, don't say that. You know that you don't aye. actually say it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um aye, so what a aye. <laughs> what a journey. 
brilliant. 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 By the way, I'm, I know, sorry, you meant to be asking me questions, but that is tremendous. I know, and I follow, I don't know the company that does it. Is it Scalp? You're the sponsor, you don't Oh, the Scalp Studio. So I've, Aye. I've been to Turkey. Oh, have you? Mm-hmm. Right. But See, I, you would never tell. But I, it is fun. The thing is, your normal hair does fall as well. And I think I'm pretty close to my second one now, but, mm. but I, I'm toying with when I'm older, you know, going bald and I think I'm going to jump yeah, on just, this. It's just, it's like, I wish I'd done it. See, when I first got alopecia, see if I'd have done it then, my whole life would have been different. Right. Like, I, I kid you not. And when did you, when did you get it done? I only got it done about a year ago, but I had alopecia for three years. Oh. So two years of that was the darkest period I could ever describe. Mm. Like it's, and it sounds so trivial, sounds so trivial to what we are talking about mm. just now, but you used to feel as if everybody's watching you all the time and you're like, as much as your hair's your hair and it's not a big deal, it is a big deal when it's gone and you're kind of self-conscious and... If you, it's, if it's, you just sit there when you're self-conscious about it as well, when you're... You go to like a GP and they're like, try not to stress about it and you're like, right. <laughs> You're telling me not to stress about my hair for now. So what do, what do you want me to do here? Like, what exactly do you want me to do here? Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, I think it's just, I kind of, I'm at this stage now, like you were talking about, I'm like, I don't care. I like it. I'm happy. Like, it's class, mate. I don't care what anybody else can, I uh, don't know if it's just because I'm getting older. I'm like, whatever. That's a like, sweet I'm spot. genuinely no bothered. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's what it is. You make yourself happy in this world. You do. That is the, the sweet spot when you get to that point. Eh? Um, and you might have dips in the game, but when you get to that point, that's... Aye, 100%. I wish I'd got there earlier, but... I I remember a boy I took when I was a career advisor in school. I took their school football team and uh, we got to the final, Scottish schools final. And uh, there was a video when we won another cup and it wasn't actually a boy we played against, but it must have been a fan of that the other team mm-hmm. and he one of your boys had alopecia right and obviously he's seen the video and under the comments he's I don't know what he, he only said something like baldy or something Aye. I don't know what he says and uh, I absolutely are you uh, it's actually this is related to a wee bit about football team talks as well I got so angry and so hurt by it that and I'm usually never when they do team talks around the school team whenever you give too much emotion things yeah. like that because I was so hot and uh, angry because I know how much that probably would have hurt right. me. Um, I, I was, I vented too much and I think I put, we went and lost again free too. That was our <laughs> only loss, but. Too much pressure on yourself. But, you know, there is horrible people there and oh. that's what we need to build that armour up so you can handle that, eh? And it is those kind of, like you're saying with that letter, it's those jabs when you are you don't want them, when you're oh. at your lowest point and somebody's just like, bang, but it's a process, mate. That's where we are. I think things happen to me because they're supposed to happen and I might not know at the time but I will find out at some point. No, not a religious way, I'm not a religious person at all but I always think that this has come into my path or something. I don't know why. Are you any, mani- are you any manifesting and all that? I've no, it's, I've always just had that. See, since I was younger, I'm like, this must be happening for, I don't know why, but maybe uh, I'll know in 10 years time but have this you, happens. Have you heard about the secret and all that? Yes. Uh, uh-huh. so I'm that and I'm completely, I agree with you, I'm, no. I relate to that completely, I'm a, a big believer and I always knew something, I was meant to do something in my life mm-hmm. and I've just not found it yet for years. Yeah. You know, I just knew. Yeah, no, you do. I, I, I totally get what you're saying. I, I think, think it's like in a, I think it's always, I'm quite calm about like working things like that because I'm like something will, if I keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing, something will meet my path and I'm, I've made peace with the fact that it won't always be good things that make your path. But as you said, it adds to that armour. Oh, so as you're going, you're building and it's served me well. So I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it. Right. Um, brilliant. So I'm going to do a wee, this is my new thing. I'm going to do a wee 20 question quick fire. Love it. But before I do that, I would like to know, taking you back, right, based on what you know right now and what you've been through since... April, September time, mm-hmm. what would you go back and tell Xander in March last year before this whole, this whole whirlwind? Oh, 
So back um, before I came out or back yeah. when I came out to the football? Before out? both. Before both. So the weirdly the you always need to hit I feel you need to maybe hit rock bottom to begin to get up. Um aye, that March time was actually still quite tough because I was nearly there. Mm-hmm. I'm just it's holding me back. I'm nearly just go and do it. Yeah, that right. was the point I'm like, I'm ready to go and tell my mum and my tell my bro, come on, what's going on? Oh, it's deep here, but a great question. Um I would I would say honestly, like just it's useful for this because I'm trying not to get emotional. <laughs> Has anyone ever cried on your show by now? No, don't give me ah, that no. record. <laughs> <laughs> it's emotional. Got, uh, I suppose uh, it will be for you though because you're revisiting I, all true. those worries and then everything that's happened since. I don't know, but, it, but it's nice now that I can actually do that though. Eh? Yeah. Like, I never. Yeah. It was such a tough period, but I would just say, just go for it, son. Mm. Um, just fucking take light, man. I know yeah. it's fucking terrifying. I know it's scary. I know you think everyone's out to get you. And how weird, you know, like that time was like, I thought, you know, when you're, you're really negative and you're going through a tough time, you think everyone's out to get you, don't you? Mm. You think everyone's your fucking worst anyway. Right. And, um, you need to do that. has got your back and all this yeah. bullshit. And mental, as soon as I've done that, man, just, I mean, I can't, I've not got enough, I've got too many pals now. I'm like, Try to bat them off now. I can't even fit them in a week now. Do you know what I mean? But back then, I didn't. I, I, in my head, I was like, I've not got any pals. No, you're just on your own. I've, there's nobody else here, you know, and that's. I, I just know how hard that was. I was just. I just wish I'd done it. I don't wish I'd done it any sooner because mm-hmm. look at me, look how my yeah. life's transformed. But I would just say, just fucking go for it. Just yeah. take the leap. And as, as scary as it is, it's better being your true, authentic self and facing whatever you're faced with than living a lie. Because mm-hmm. I've done it for too many years. Yeah. And I know people have. Don't fucking just go and be you. Yeah. Trust there's something as you've just disc- there's something in your gut that you that it's always right. Yeah. Is it your gut you always say trust your gut in it? Is it so true? Is it your gut? Aye. Is trust it your that gut. feeling? Eh? Gut instinct. I thought I've, I know I've said that about ninety million times. You should probably just it's true <laughs> name though. this trust it your is, gut, Xander Murray, but it is um, so true. I wish I maybe just went for it and took the leap. Um but also what I would say is just I wish I maybe accepted myself a bit quicker because mm. that was still a tough period coming out and then still try to hide for yeah. coming out and actually being gay and it, you know, it's at the time maybe having a boyfriend or whatever mm-hmm. and then, you know, walking about the street and stuff. Yeah. Still being at the cause of the football community, fucking hard. Aye. That was really tough to try to hide. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't imagine if anyone else has gone through that. So I, that's some message that I would definitely say to myself is go and work on yourself. Yeah. Go and accept yourself. And that was, it was good that, you know, I already done all that work, you know, that Wim Hof journaling, counselling, you know, to actually come out that I could just tap back into that mm-hmm. game to, to fully accept yeah. myself. And, you know, I tried everything. There's some that never really, I'm, I'm naming all these off like, oh yeah. my God, I do all these all the time. Bullshit. <laughs> no, I didn't. I tried them all. Yeah. Some worked, some never, but the ones that worked, uh, I definitely tapped right in again to fully accept myself. And here we are. On a wonderful what podcast. An what an answer, <laughs> right, I'm not going to ask you it's going to potentially make you cry now, right? So I'm going to move on to <laughs> these are just some fun, love it, wee questions, right? So, who was your hero growing up? Henry Larson. <laughs> <laughs> Can't sorry, you dumb it up like that already. <laughs> Straight away, sorry. Very different perspective for me. <laughs> um, Michael Holmes. No, who was mine actually? Probably Brian Loudrop. Oh, oh, do you, I, do you know one who doesn't get spoken about for Rangers and he used to make me, my dad, we used to take him out and it, take me out to the park and he used to always be crying. Rod Wallace, every time uh, I went to an old firm, but in the, he always used to score against Celtic. <laughs> I used to be out greeting all the time. <laughs> See, that was me with Larson. Aye. I just like, honestly, every time. So I still get rent free in my head, honestly. Getting um, goosebumps for what player. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Oof. Aye. He's a goat, isn't he? Man, I, 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 oh, I mean, he's just made to, he was just born to play football, wasn't he? Aye. It, it, Ronaldo is the super, supreme athlete, you know, mm-hmm. all about that work hard. I genuinely believe that Messi does not, he's, he's probably just worked like a, like a normal professional. Aye. Just an actual talent. It's just got that gift that he can just carve and open up a game and 
but he's still doing it at 35 and what a, like playing for like a top top team still and now he's just playing with a cigar out like oh, funny. Right. he's completed football he Aye. is actually he has completed football he's literally playing FIFA now with Neymar <laughs> and Mbappe he's just he's just kicking about that, there's no one well I was, I've, I was too young for Maradona but and he just do you know what he just seems like a fucking good guy Aye. and that means all, uh, uh, that you see that eh, in the media and I'm no disrespect to Ronaldo right but has Messi ever come out and said he's the best player in the world doesn't say much doesn't say much just as he's talking action action speak louder than much on he? the pitch um, aye um, last meal on earth what are you having oh. try to go veggie for a bit no doubt hey, all, all those veg- <laughs> hey, fair play to you vegetarian you know and I, I'm a flexitarian right you know um, oh a steak was calling me there <laughs> I, uh, I fill it steak with fries Sweet potato fries, no sweet potato fries, chunky like that melon cutter. And then what did they do with that cut? You mean melon cutter and lettuce and that? What is oh, it? Oh, the cabbage with the salt, like the dressing. Aye, I never eat that. No, no, mate. I'm all about the steak at that Aye, point. I'm just like, get that away from me. Medium rare, peppercorn sauce, and you come. Oh, <laughs> superb. Uh, oh, sushi as well. Sushi, I love sushi. Nice. What Any annoys su- you the most? My dog farting on my face. I'm farting near my fucking face. She's an absolute pro at it. I'm a dog moaning that she wants to go a, a walk and I take her to the door and she's like, no, I don't want to go a walk. Or I take her, we go to the start of the walk and then she'll just stop and stare at me like, no, no walking anymore. Don't know what you're planning here. I'm like, you're fucking... <laughs> um, I, well, we, no, I love it a bit. I love it. What else annoys me? Um... Ireland in washing. Mm. Ah, yeah. What? Agreed. Oh. Agreed. Dishes, all these stuff. Don't oh. mind dishes, but see actual clothes. No. There just seems to be piles everywhere. Oh. You know, um, I all that stuff. And <laughs> just because I'm just knackered all the time. It's just, oh. <laughs> um, biggest regret? No point in the league sooner. Yeah, I've never we didn't talk about that, but obviously mm-hmm. I had two or three occasions that I could have played a couple of seasons ago. Could have had a jump up or offer to go a trial here and there. In fact, a fair few times mm-hmm. had the offer to jump up sooner. Shut the bed, obviously, because I was gay. I was like, oh no, what if they see me in the street? Blah 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 blah. What mm-hmm. if they find out? Too much media scrutiny. Aye, unfortunately, aye, that's my wee bit of regret because now I'm 31. I'm like, fuck, I should have been, I should have been here years ago, but. But you're here now. Exactly. Uh, most embarrassing moment. Oh <laughs> my god! There's been a few, to be fair. Uh, probably there's a travelling one. Actually, I went went travelling to right. find myself. Great, right. you know. Um, was it a couple of summers ago? Went uh, did the whole Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam. Brilliant. Aye. Didn't find myself then, but I had a great <laughs> time. Uh, absolutely magic. Uh, Cambodia, for whatever right. reason, like the beer there was duck cheap, as you can imagine. Right. But I kept sleepwalking. And <laughs> day one, day two, it was getting worse. And then day three, I woke up in like a family. I was in a hostel, but I woke up like in a, like a family's room <laughs> in their bed. And I'm, I woke up like, <laughs> oh, like half asleep. <laughs> you couldn't speak any English. And I'm like, what? I'll show you. I'll put the photo. I'll give you the photo. <laughs> <you. This>, um, <laughs> like, and then I, so I leave there. I can remember that and then my pals woke me up at six in the morning just outside their room I just had my head down just sleeping on this like the stairway I'll show you that I'll send you the picture I'm like how is that how embarrassing is that imagine being the wee family I know <laughs> I don't know if they felt sorry for me or I, I, I don't know but to this day I'm like what is in that beer so I, after that day three I'm like I'm not drinking that beer anywhere give me something Jeez. else um, but I'll even tell what beer was it I think it was just called Cambodia Lager never drink Cambodia Lager. Aye, that's not a selling point there at all, <laughs> man. Jeez. Favourite superhero? Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Spash. Spider-Man. I also like that, you know, that Jimmy Vardy celebration when he turns around and he does that. And I'd love to do that. <laughs> I'd be classy. Just do it stop. next time you score. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to. Eh... Uh, what do you think your biggest weakness is? 
In football, my right peg. Oh my goodness, man, it's for standing on. What about life? <laughs> life. <laughs> um, I'm an empath, eh? I care too much about others. Right. I care too much about what other people think. And I just want to help people and put, I like to put a smile on people's faces. That's how so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but nah, nah. I just care. I I care so much, and it's especially the people that I love, and that I've got great group of pals and stuff. And mm-hmm. I care so so much. Don't let a lot of people in, Gary. I'll be Aye. honest, but when I do, off Aye. immense loyalty. But I, and then even out with that, I just I still need better. It just kill me some mm. negative. Yeah, because like I just I care a bit. What scares you the most? Well, that's the wrong song. Kyle Cox and that was there, I'm trying to think. Uh, what scares me? Um, now it's probably just mm, not taking, like, not taking, no living a fulfilled life. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to be. I say that if you want to be a guru here or something. <laughs> I, want to, I want to continue to have a rich life, but mm-hmm. no, I, necessarily, I don't care about how much money yeah. you make and stuff. I just, I just want good people around me, mm-hmm. good people having a great time. With what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> what scares you the most? How did that go? <laughs> oh my god! No, was that the right? Aye. Aye. I I just I want uh, I just want to have a continue to have a good circle, um, because at the end of the day, like all this stuff and the fame and the fit, all these things, money, blah blah, they all fade. It's who you've got and who the people you're, right. you're spending your time with. Do you know what I mean? That's end of the day, and I always say that I might see if whatever or even this stops with that. Like who cares? I've got a right. great life behind me, and that's so fucking important because I didn't used to have that. Right. Um, I didn't have really good people because when you're going through a t- hurt people hurt people. When mm-hmm. I was going through a tough time, um, that's just what happens. But now I I just want my people still to be in my life the day I die. That that means the most to me. You know, when you're what the people who pick on that is. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, a song you know word for word. Oh, Abba Dancing Queen. Nice. And nice. Then I, I love a bit of Abba. Before I nice. Be uh, Wagon Wheel, Darius Rucker. I don't know that Rock song. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock. Oh, you dick. I don't. I genuinely hey, don't. Hey, mama, rock me. Rock me, mama, like a wind in the rain. I rock. listen to that. Daddy's rocker. I met, I, 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 not to offend your singing, but maybe I'll hear it and be like, <laughs> right, I know the song. Daddy's rocker. rocker. Right, okay. Uh, one thing about you that nobody would know. Oh, I've actually got a really decent part. I think I think I'm uh, quite funny, but obviously we, of course, uh, what I need to do in the media, of course, it's all quite Aye. serious. And but I love coming on things like this and having actually just a good laugh. I like, do you know what I mean? People maybe you think me dead serious. No, I'm I'm not. I just why your pal's got to jump on this, but no, he doesn't. <laughs> Shocking <laughs> part. <laughs> My brother will be messing me like you're miles after. it. Miles after. it. No. <laughs> People don't know what else is anything exciting. Anything exciting. I steal my brother's clothes all the time. The same. <laughs> I stole his trainers today. By the way, if anyone wants to see his trainers, I steal his clothes all the time. He, is he aware of it? Eclectic mix. I secretly sometimes put them back. Right. He's got a collective mix of top top gear. All this stuff. Right. You know what I mean, all the all this all the stuff. All the all the best of gear. But he doesn't sell it in go and deep of vintage. So I'm like, yeah. it's dust. His actual wardrobe, but there's dust on it. He's got that many clays. Um, I just got to steal it. Just going to have a browse. Aye. He's got to be right, Jeremy. He's the best bit. <laughs> <laughs> Back, all the couples padlocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dream job. If you're on the football. Oh. Well, this is a boring answer to exciting answer. Mm-hmm. When I quit football, I followed the narrative of what you should do as a heteronormative person, heteronormative at the time, and I 
went to college, I went to university, mm -hmm. got a degree, went and got a big boy job, you know, and, off and great, you know, career advisor, great company I work for, amazing stuff like that, but I'm like, this isn't what I'm Aye. made to do, mm -hmm. you know, this isn't make me tick like football and, yep, money's great and stuff, great money, but that, I realised very quickly, money does not make you happy, mm -hmm. so that was a deep answer. I would love, to, once I'm finished, to get into management. Right. Coaching again. Um, I, wouldn't really, I, I had a wee stint at women's football when I was at uni coaching. Um, when I really the women's game, to be honest with you. I mm -hmm. love, I watched it, I'm an active, I watched it, I, I keep in touch with some of them as well. I wouldn't really like it. Um, obviously, I'll, today I die, I'll, whether it's a career or not, I'll still be an ambassador yeah. for this area, LGBTQ+, and pushing that and helping players Help players that are struggling. I think I've now got our own mm -hmm. the, the world. The world, no, <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still <a> scuddy. <laughs> uh, but I, women's. I would love to get into coaching management if I, when I finish. Nice. First football top you ever had? Gonna kill me here and say like no. Celtic seven last night or something. You? You'd be surprised. <laughs> so the Jags, the Harry Rags, Aye. nice plastic whistle. Um, I fuck big family, a lot of family are Jag fans, um, so I'm like partly sporting. Oh, um, yeah. What if they play each other though? What's the. I just feel sorry for the Jags. <laughs> <laughs> um, you feel sorry for me. Uh, but that's probably my, f my first, to be fair. Um, but I was obsessed with it growing up with Ronaldo in it. I had the oh. fringe and all that. Oh, mine? Oh, with the blonde fringe. Oh, so I bought it, I just. He was just. He, what was he called? Was, emperor? Was it Emperor? Uh, is it the Emperor he gets called, eh? I think he does. I just call him the OG Ronaldo. Oh, just had everything. Eh? Injuries obviously killed him, eh? But he just. Incredible. Aye, Incredible. Favourite uh, yeah. holiday destination? I mean, I'm guessing it's not Cambodia. After. <laughs> 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 the wee comment. And the people there are. Amazing, but Aye. mental, right? Aye. I remember my last day, so it's ta there are no taxis there, it's tuk tuks. Mm -hmm. And I was getting a flight to Vietnam to meet other pals, and it's 6 a.m., so you're, you're waking up, and the tuk tuk was outside, and there's always a be security guard outside the hostels. They love a carry on. Right. Like, just carry on me. I know that's sexy. I'll get my bag now, and he's like, hey, it's this day, it's this day. He's like, hello. He's like, hey, the security guard. I'm like, hey, all right. <laughs> Nobody. He's like, hey, and I'm like, hey, he did it. And then he just start carrying on, and they're all tiny as well, eh? So they're just like, right, right, God's sake. <laughs> talk, talk, guy sees this. He comes there, starts, I'm like, what is going on? Six in the morning, these two tiny Cambodian <laughs> guys are trying to okay, have a Royal Rumble with me. Um, <laughs> but favourite destination was 110% Thailand, what a place. Aye. I would love to go to Japan. That's my future. I one. would like to go to Japan. <sighs> Having a bit, eh? Technology. Because of Kyogo as well. Aye, that as well, aye. <laughs> Obviously. So I can chase his family, but look, you're going to, to get him up the road. Sharpish, right? Um, He's not enjoying it there. <laughs> no, no, they do, they do a lot of things right. I uh, love the food as well. And, but Thailand was just another world, eh? Oh, it's... You been? It's, no, but I've... You know, weirdly, I've read a few books in Thailand has been a scene in it and it sounds incredible. I was... Watching the beach last night came on Aye. as I was trying to get my bed. Um, and I remember being on that island, PPI Island, and PPI Island have got this bar where they, it's a rooftop and there's a big screen where they just continue to play the beach. The bar is called the beach as well. <laughs> I remember a big locust actually came on top of your table. I fucking shot myself that day as well. But um, I remember watching that beach again and that All Saint tune comes on that oh. and I'm like, pure I'm like, oh my God, I've been there. Was, <laughs> it's just amazing, eh, seeing these places, being a wee boy for Glenska. 100% mate. Uh, Favourite film? Glorious Bastards. Can I, can I be controversial? Mm -hmm. I don't like Tarantino. Oh, I, well, I, I can understand, you know. But I just think the more and more I watch that film, it's like four or five different languages and it, it's just... Brad Pitt's good in it. Oh, just genius. Man. Like, I can't even... It's got everything in it. Yeah, like, it's funny, it's suspense. Like, sus suspense. Oh, it's just... Um, I don't know, I just find him really egotistical. As a guy, 100%, I know, I know. Um, but he's making films, he's just got Aye. weird. Aye, well he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Aye, I love that film, to be honest. Uh, what about anything else? 
I think, you know. But that was a film that's uh, stands out. One thing I like about living in Scotland. The weather. <laughs> <laughs> As we're waiting on snow coming. Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> Peace of the East. <laughs> um, no, let's be more specific. Living in Glasgow, because I've lived yeah. about... As you can probably tell, my accent nearly said Ken on this <laughs> cardinal sin in the garden. And Ouija. Oh, <laughs> obviously lived for uni and that through Edinburgh and stuff. But I was just choking at your back. Right. See, so just departed in Glasgow. I've missed it so much. Eh? Just, just general taking the piss at each other. Right. Oh, it just doesn't happen anywhere else. No, no disrespect to Edinburgh. I love Edinburgh. People, are all right. Totally different, though, isn't it? Totally different. Right. They are. They're just no here. I don't know what it is. It's just something in the water here that just. Even a date that you go at the weekend or that, and you know, you're familiar, just the general vibe and the right. buzz is so different. Over there, it's we're a tourist, innit? It's not mm-hmm. just like my pals who knew were Irish, uh, or Irish and or foreign and all that. Right. Um, I just feel that I Glasgow, I've moved to the south side, mm-hmm. Shawns, and that's brilliant. Bustling, I've obviously never lived in a place like you can just walk out your house and right. just wee cafes and all that, kind mm-hmm. of you know what I mean? Queen's Park's up there, uh, Doug, and all that. Well, the hipsters and stuff, do you know what I mean? I've turned into one. It's, <laughs> it's brilliant. Love it. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, what's your karaoke song? Abba Dancing Queen again. <sighs> but no, uh, there, there must be others. Abba, I just love an Abba number. What's that one? Um, and they caught me last night from... Oh. Fernando? No. No. No, I'm doing it in my head now. What is that song called? Oh, that's going to annoy the life out of me. But that's a that's a <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad banger. To be fair, uh, I just love a bit of dancing. Super, Super Trooper. Super Trooper. That's my next one. Right. Eight Naba. Uh, I'm on there. Love it. Beautiful. Uh, any match day superstitions? Aye. That's pretty, I don't know if you've been saying that. Very superstitious. Match day. See if I, see if, uh, I've got obviously different boots and stuff. If, if I score with the boots, I'm keeping the boots. Mm-hmm. Even my true socks, you know, with the, Aye. how do you explain true socks? The grip yep. socks. If I score with these, the specific socks, and some of them I've got the same, mm-hmm. but these specific ones, I'm keeping them on. Um, I need to have two meals before my game. And the 3pm kickoff. Right. They have my porridge and sort of whatever in the morning. And then they have my scrambled egg and toast and beans. Always, to. religiously. I have to. No. I have to, have to, have to. Um, I, when I was a wee guy, I had weird, mad superstitions. I'm glad I grew up then. <laughs> Are you ready for this, man? <laughs> I was like, um, first one was, I had to, um, up four times for us I got the ball when I was we get I was at this stage of like four when did I make my I, st- I began to make myself butt maybe like twelve before I went just before I went to Motherwell Motherwell I was playing boys club and I was like I'm not gonna play well or I'm not gonna this passage of play until I butt four times. So I'm just let's make myself up. I mean the ball comes to you a lot and I get my football uh, so as any well. passage of play so like a goal kick, free kick, um a buzz of the other side right. I'm I'm trying to make myself up. Oh man. That's wild. Times. I know. And I was like, people will watch me. The guy's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, I'm just a freak. <laughs> I'm just a weirdo. Oh, <laughs> last one. If you could swap lives with somebody for a day, who would it be? What a question. Wow. Deep, but Vladimir Putin. Jeez. Aye. Of all the answers I, I could have wrote down there. He's a mad bastard, isn't he? <laughs> What's going on in his brain, man? What's happening like, in his like his day-to-day life that, you know... When did on the calendar? Aye. And he was just sitting in rivers on horses and all that. <laughs> Wild. Like, I love that just... he sat there and went, I'm bringing out a calendar. <laughs> He's nuts, eh? Hope he doesn't hear this. God, <laughs> but, ah, oh, God, I just... Mad, mad bastard for no better term, eh? That would be random. That would be random. I just want to just see what the fuck about yeah, what he does. Just, I just pull the plug and just put an end to it. No, like, actual, you know, <laughs> whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, other than that, anyone in Scotland that would... 
Nah. That's probably enough for you, isn't it? Dane Big Vlad, that would be... Big Vlad, aye. Wild. Mate, this has been brilliant. This it's has good. been... It's, it's went very laughing bits to sad bits to bits in between, but in, in all seriousness, I think it's good for people who will probably watch it and might be in the similar situation that you were in. And they can sit and go, do you know what? That's exactly how I feel right now. I'm going to watch that documentary or I'm going to reach out to one of these support groups and and try and put myself in a better position. So mm. much the same as your documentary, if it helps one person, then it's been worth it, mate. It's all done, though. No? Absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming on. I hope that, you know, I know your, your client base and the people that do watch this and obviously the ones that are struggling, that's the ones that you want to focus on. But even just general public that don't really know a lot of gay people and hopefully it maybe challenges them and maybe the terminologies they use as well. And yeah. I've loved it, mate. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Super.